Uh, we're going to get into the Word for a few moments this morning. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. I believe it. I believe it. I'm expectant, grateful for His presence, His help. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Man, well, what would we do without His help? Where would we be? Just imagine, just for a minute. Let's not meditate on it too long. But where would we be if it wasn't for Jesus? Uh, it wouldn't be here. <laughs> That's for sure. It may not even be, uh, we may not even be alive if it wasn't for his goodness and his mercy. And I'm grateful. Yeah. You know, often, you know, we, we, we give God credit and praise him and uh, make mention, and rightly so, uh, concerning uh, what he saved us from. And he saved us from a whole bunch of uh, calamities and all kinds of different things where we missed um, be it a car crash or something, you know, bad. But how many things we just will, we, we just don't know about that we escaped because someone prayed for you because you've got a shield of protection around you because you woke up and you put on the garment of praise. Amen. And you, you put on the belt of truth. You, you made the word of God first place in your life. And uh, you, you declared because how many know the righteousness that we have received that is uh, through a work of grace, through a work of Jesus, and is by faith, speaks. And so it's not just good enough to know that you're the righteousness of Christ. You've got to say, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. So when you say that, you're putting on, effectively, you're putting on the, the, the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. You're putting up the sword of the Spirit. You, you've got it in, in your hand, which is the Word of God. You're putting up. The, the shield of faith, amen, that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. It doesn't touch you, can't penetrate the shield. Can't get through. It can't get through. No weapon. Woo, come on, somebody. Come on, we plead the blood over families. Even right now, we speak protection over families. Oh, thank you for the blood of Jesus. And Father, we just want to thank you for all the things that you protected us from that we might, even not, we, we, we might not even know about, but... But we're here, and that's, a, that's, that's telling. We're here. We're alive and kicking. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Oh, glory. Thank you for the blood. I can't get off that for a moment. Just turn in your Bibles for, for a moment this morning, uh, right here to, um, to Ephesians chapter 2. Look at this, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I'm glad we're in church, amen? Um, this morning at this time, I just believe that God can get us in the right place, hearing the right things, just the exact right word we need to hear. It says here in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, who once were far, we were once far, now in Christ Jesus, you who once were. Is this past tense? Uh, what is this telling us? We're not anymore. We're not anymore. We're not far. We're near. God's not far away. He's near to us. Now in Christ. Come on, how, how near do you think that is? How close do you think that is? Come on, you are in him and he is in you. We've been brought near by Jesus. Now, for those who confess Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior, right near, right here, right now, I'm trying to say, you are near, amen, to here. Made possible because of Jesus. Who once you, you were once far. We're not disputing the fact that you were once far off. Oh man, how far off were you? Many of us were far, we were far off, way off. Way off. We were all way off, right? But not anymore. Right now we're near. But you have been. This is past tense. Have been. This is something that he has done. Not, not, we don't have to wait for him to do this. He's brought us near. How? By the blood of Jesus. I heard this in my spirit. I wasn't meaning to start on this, but the Holy Ghost was. I heard this in my spirit. 
uh, this morning. This is not a time to stand at a distance. This is not a time to stand at a distance. And I got to pray, and I was in my office, as I always am early in the morning, praying and seeking the Lord. And when he gets to speak, and I'm like, man, you're messing up my message. But how many of you can mess up whatever he wants to mess up that ain't right? It's really not messing it up. It's just the mess of the message needed correcting. <laughs> And I've got to humble myself like all of us and say, okay, this is not your best. I want it. I want your best. So mess with me however you want to mess with me, and I'll yield to you. Give me the word. Give me the word. I'll start writing some stuff down. I'm going to, maybe I'll get to my message, but I'm going to get to what he said for me to share first. It wasn't like he was saying what you had is not relevant. It is timely. I believe it. Uh, but there's something in this, all right? Look at this. First John chapter 5, verse 4. And this is where I started on the back of when the Lord told me this, when he said, it is not a time. It is not a time to stand at a distance. This is a time to jump in. Hallelujah. It's not a time. It's not a time to stand at a distance. How many know you can, like I said, you can be present but not present? It says here, for, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. There is victory in Jesus. Let me say it. There is victory in Christ. Amen. We're not trying to get it. We got it. If you've got Jesus, you have got victory. We've got victory. Well, where is victory? Where is it? Come on, we're talking about locations, places. Places, right? Uh, we're not to stand at a distance in a place that we shouldn't be. We're, st- we're called to stand in, in, in a, another place, not at a distance to the place we should be. Don't stand at a distance to the place where you should be. Where's victory? In Jesus. If you've got Jesus, you've got victory. Victory is in Jesus. Victory is in... Uh, uh, it, it, where, okay, let me rephrase that. Where is victory? Let me answer it. Where is that question? Where is victory? It's where faith in Jesus is. That's where victory is. It's where faith in Jesus is. That's where victory is. Victory over every area of our lives. Victory over the devil. Uh, uh, in the, the place for victory over the devil is where your faith is. Where your faith in Jesus is. That's where the victory is. The moment you put your faith in Jesus is the moment you get baptized into the body of Christ. There is, there is different baptisms. The first baptism is you getting baptized into the body of Christ. Glory to God. You're baptized into the body. Come on, you are in Christ. Did. Now you're in Christ and Christ is in you. Come on. Then there's a the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Woo! What a baptism. Amen. Where you receive the power of God. The soaking of God, amen. amen. Filled with the power, anointed, which means rubbed down. Come on, the old Holy Ghost was poured out. The same way it was poured out upon Jesus is the same way it is poured out upon us. We have the same Holy Ghost. All week I've been just meditating on the simple truths of Christianity. Just the simplicity of of what we have, who we are in Jesus. And I'm telling you, it's changing my life. And I got to thinking about same Holy Ghost. Same Holy Ghost. That was, think about it. The same Holy Ghost that empowered Jesus. The same, not a different Holy Ghost. Not an inferior Holy Ghost. Not a junior Holy Ghost. The same Holy Spirit. The same power that was on Jesus is on me. And it's on you, the believer. No difference. There are multiple Holy Ghosts. The Holy Ghost. Woo! Same power. Same power that, 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 that the Father operated in, His power... To get Jesus out of the grave is the same power that is quickening 
our bodies. Why? Because it's in us, it's on us, and it's working. Same power. Same Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Where's victory? It's where our faith in Christ is. It's where you can't separate victory and faith. There's no such thing as having um, no victory on the back of being in faith. No, if you're in faith, you're going to experience victory. Yeah, yeah. Genuine faith. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay. Well, w- w- let's ask another question. Where is uh, the blessing? Where is the anointing? Same power, same anointing, same Holy Ghost. Where is it? Well, um, uh, yeah, but notice how it is experienced in Psalms 133, verses 3. It says, there the Lord commands. Man, these are real cushiony panels here. This is nice. Anyone like nice, soft carpet in your living room? Hey, check this out after the meeting. (laughs) It says, there. Come on, somebody. There, there is the commanded blessing of the Lord, where the Lord commands the blessing of God, where God commands victory, commands the blessing, commands God, God's declaring it over you. There, well, where is there? No, remember, this is not a time to stand at a distance. I want to get in that place. Whenever God talks about, you know, you're standing in a distance, you know, out, out on the fringes, well, okay, where should I be? Where's the place? Let's define where the location is, right? So, so he says, okay, right there, there I will command the blessing. Well, where is it there? Verse 1. How good and pleasant it is that the brethren and the sister, and don't want to leave you out, how good and pleasant it is to dwell together in unity. Who? Glory to God. Where is where is power? Notice this next verse. Where is the anointing? Where is, where is the place where God will command the blessing? Where is it? It's right there. Well, where? Where there is unity. Right where there's unity. Look at verse 2. Look at the next verse. He said it's going to be like um, the precious oil. The precious anointing. This is a picture of what will happen. Hallelujah. It's like the precious oil upon the head. The head uh, the, uh, running down on the beard, the, the priest, the, uh, the beard of Aaron. He, talks, he goes on about talking about Aaron. Now, how many know we have a new high priest, Jesus, the righteous? From whose head does this anointing flow? Come on, from whose head? Does this anointing flow? It's from Jesus. The anointed one. (laughs) The anointed one. When there is one, it makes it precious. If there's a bunch, come on, no one can do it like Jesus can do it. Come on. There's no savior. There's no other way. He is the way. He's the way. Come on, that makes this is precious now. See, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Father are, 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 are one. The great three in one. Hallelujah. So, um, so, 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 so this precious anointing comes from the head, Jesus, and it runs down from Jesus on the edges of his garments. So it runs right down, down his whole body now and just deals with everybody else. Whew, come on now. Just covers it all. You can't escape from it. Not trying to get it. Not come on now. Right on his, right on his, on his edges, right there, and just fills that whole garment. Come on now. It hits the edges and then seeps right in. Come on, somebody. Woo! <laughs> and see, you're the body of Christ. Wherever you go in the body, come. You can't escape from this anointing as long as there is unity. There is unity. That's where the blessing is. Don't stand at a distance. Amen. Unite. It's time to unite. 
It's time to participate. I'll start. This is just me and the Holy Ghost. Where this morning he was sharing this to me. So I'm going to relate to you. It's time to participate, not spectate. We should not be spectators to the move of the Spirit. It's time to unite and experience the commanded blessing of the Lord. This is not a time to stand at a distance. This is a time to jump in and follow the anointing. Look at 2 Kings. And this is where the Lord taught, uh, sh uh, shared this to me. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. And I'm grateful you came. I'm glad that we have a Holy Ghost who's going to help us. Amen. Man, I need his help. Uh, you know, I, I could come up with messages, um, but um, his is always best. I forgot to, I forgot to put on my uh, James Bond uh, glasses, so this is going to, ooh, praise the Lord. <laughs> I can see something. Uh, 2020. Second Kings, look at this, Second Kings chapter 2, verse 8. I want, I want you to see this. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up. And struck, and there's something, struck, he took his garment, and that's something in relation to what we just looked at. He took his garment, he took his, man, his, um, his, his mantle, he rolled it up, and he struck the water, and the water divided this way and that way. It divided this way, and it divided that way, right? The wars divided. This is talking about Jordan. And, uh, and then it goes on and says, so that the two of them, the two of them, well, which two are we talking about? Well, if we had time to read the whole chapter, we would know that it was Elijah, the one who stroked the war, the prophet, the one who was carrying the anointing. How many know, I'm grateful that we're not in the Old Testament. I'm grateful that we, are, we can all carry the anointing. Oh, my days. Follow a man who's got it. Woo, we've got, we can follow the man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who got it once and for all for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we've got Elijah. That's one. We've got Elisha. That's two. So Elijah was the one who had the anointing. Elisha was the one who was following the anointing. <laughs> Elijah had it. Elisha is following it. He's pursuing it. He's going after it. But what disappoints me in this having read the context and knowing the context is that uh 50 was standing at a distance 50 was standing at the distance what were they doing well they weren't doing what elisha was do elisha was doing they were standing at a distance now it says the two crossed over two out of 52 crossed over that that bears terrible statistics doesn't it that is a terrible pitiful ratio where where, where were the 380 upper room where, where were they 500 were invited 120 showed up where where were the 380 now there's always going to be people who are going to jump in there's always going to be people who are going to Stand at a distance. Uh, the question is, and really, you can only answer it because no one's going to pull you, drag you, not even the Holy Ghost will. And the moment anyone else does, it's not God. It is the devil. He is, he is a pusher, schemer. He pushes you. One way you can tell uh, it isn't God is when you feel driven in a direction. You feel pushed in a direction. You feel the pressure of it. You know, you know what I mean? If I can, um, Paul, let me just use you as an example. I haven't, like, messed with you for a while, so. You don't mind me messing with you, right? So, uh, <laughs> do, do, you, do you want me to make you dizzy? I could. Now, this will really go downhill if I do. Um, now, now, the Spirit of God doesn't do this. Now, you can just, just, the Spirit of God doesn't do this. Go this way. Go this way. Come on. Go this way. I'm not kicking him out of church. No, you would, you, you like really resisted then. Come on. <laughs> He's helping me out. No, we haven't rehearsed this, have we? So, now, now that's what the devil would do. Push you. You've got to go this direction. You've got to go this direction. Forces you. But the Spirit of God never does that. The Spirit of God will give you a, give you a nudge. Just a, hey, hey, 
He's this way. It's not that way. It's this way. Follow my lead. And, uh, huh? Yeah. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. How many know this is the highest way? Right here. This is the highest way. Oh, man. I was praying in the Holy Ghost and, and I took time out to pray. And I know that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about the current season of the ministry. And, um, and he said to me that, that we're in a, in a season where we're, we're moving from where we were to where we need to be. And what's taken us there is a bridge. Now, this bridge, now, how many of you have ever been on a bridge? <laughs> Most of us. You realize there's only two ways to go, forward or backwards. <laughs> right? You can't turn left, you can't turn right. I mean, you could try, but it's going to be pretty sour. There are but two ways to go. You're either going to move forward or you're going to move backwards. And I heard this in my spirit, that, that, um, that uh, thank God for the reign of heaven, amen. amen. The greater places require, and the greater days require greater ways to yield to. You can't get a greater way than this. And he will show you the way. No, he'll show you, not push you. Now, uh, this guy is, was that a trot? I'd say a skip. It was a skip. He's got a pep in his step this morning. Um, and so he said, look, and now just work with me. Don't, like, don't be so obedient. No. <laughs> um, so he'll say, hey, it's this way. And he'll, he'll take, how many know you, can't, you don't want to live ahead of God? You don't want to overtake him and get ahead of God. Now, if he doesn't follow, now I told you, don't be so obedient. Um, <laughs> um, so if I'm going this way, don't, don't just don't, look, I'm, I'm encouraging you to come, right? I'm encouraging you to come this way, and, I, and I'm leading the way. You still can see me. But, but how many know uh, the Spirit of God will keep on, if you're not following, he'll keep on going back and will, will rehearse to you. He will show you. Over and over again until you get it. Until you take that step in the direction you need to go. He will. He will do this, won't he? Oh, glory to God. The Spirit of God wants to lead you in the higher ways. Which means you've got to forsake. Listen now. You've got to forsake your old ways to embrace the new ways. Because the old ways won't cut it. Now, I, is that yours? No. It, <laughs> um, I gave this example on Monday night. I was sitting with uh, some ministry team, service team leaders. And I said, um, I reminded them of something that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and spoke right here in the service through me. Uh, that, um, that, okay, at the seven-year mark of this ministry, we hit a peak. We hit a height. We hit a height. Now, has the Lord been talking to us about lifting? Yes. He has. And that's really what my message I, I prepared for. But, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Look, there's a, there's a peak. We hit it seven years, Mark, seven years. Can you, can you see that? We hit a peak. We hit a peak. But there's multiple new peaks. All right? So if we were to, to try and get up the new peak, the new height, the way we got up peak number one, first season of this ministry then what will happen is we'll endeavor to go to the bigger peak and we'll be going up and halfway up we, we can't go any further and we'll roll back downhill again and we'll be perpetually caught in a valley type situation if we don't embrace the greater ways for the greater days you hear what I'm saying he won't cut it anymore. I said he won't cut it anymore. The way we've been thinking, the way we've been doing, what we've been doing won't be sufficient enough 
for the new heights. Now, it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. And see, we are not uh, maintaining a monument. We are embracing a movement that we are not going to stand at a distance and just watch the Holy Ghost move. We're going to jump in and yield to the Holy Ghost and move with Him. But what I'm trying to say is He is on the move. Come on, God is on the move. He's doing new things. So you can't compare um, what you, you cannot... Um, Man, Holy Ghost, give me the words to get this out. Hallelujah. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few moments. There is a bana glor for da clahirus. Hamandora for do clahora for dosi. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, we yield to you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Speak through us words today. Well, what we need to hear. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is why, um, you know, your. Uh, your former, your former prosperity, right next to the place that God's going to put you, will will just be so dwarfed that you'll be shocked. So so shocked. That's why you cannot, in fact, you are not allowed to. This is personal as much as it is corporate. We are not allowed to compare how we've done it. To how it must be done. You hear me? The old ways won't cut it. This is why, this is why unity is so important. Amen. Embracing unity. Uh, but uh, this is why a comparison is not permittable. Permissible. Permit. Can't permit it. We don't permit it. Why? Because what it will do is it will destroy contentment and rob us of gratitude. What will? Comparison. Comparison. Well, we did it this way. Comparing what we must do by how we did it. Now, thank God for wisdom that we get on the back of reflection. Wisdom is experienced when we reflect on experiences. Amen? Amen. But there is a new way to be found. There's new words to be heard. There's new methods, so to speak, to be embraced. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're in an interesting season right now. I'm telling, I'm telling you, just straight up. We're, in, we're, we're headed higher. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! We're, we're headed higher, new peaks, but, it, but greater days require greater ways. Come on, somebody get thrilled by this. Amen, I'm thrilled by this. I, my face might not look like it, but I am. Woo, man, I'm telling you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just taking it in. I'm just taking it in. Greater ways are, re are necessary for these greater days ahead, says the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We, we ask you, Spirit of God, for your help and instructives. We need, need you. And uh, we've been hearing the call to come up. We've been hearing it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we follow the plan. We follow the anointing. We pursue you, Holy Ghost. We will not stand like the 50 watching whilst Elijah and Elisha crossed over. No, no, we embrace it. We cross over. We don't just stand in amazement that it was parted here and it was parted there, that away and this away. No, 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 no. We embrace it and we walk through the opening. Come on now. We're not going to stand at a distance. We're going to walk through it. In the name of Jesus. Look at this. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 7. It says, And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. Look at that. And they too stood by Jordan. Those two, it talks about as Elijah and Elisha. The NIV says, they stood, they stood, the 50, they stood at a distance. They stood at a distance. Now how many know we're not called to stand at a distance? Come on, somebody. We, 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 are, we are called to embrace the plan of God. Participate, not spectate, and certainly not speculate. 
See, when God really shows you something, come on now, I, I really do believe that God don't mind when you speculate uh, pertaining to, like, hear me here. We say, God, what does that mean? I need further light on that. He'll give it to you. You believe that? Yeah. He'll give you further light and revelation concerning those things. I, re- I really do believe that. He will. He will. Um, hallelujah. But this is not a time to spectate. Definitely not speculate like the bunch who were in just turn to luke 5 17 okay well the guys the pharisees the sadducees the the teachers of the law i mean these are well well scripted well taught individuals they they they're teachers of the scrolls and and scripts and they're in this place where the power of god was present to heal can you see this the power was there Uh, But they aren't taking or receiving the power. And the reason was because of their reasoning, speculating. They were questioning. Yet the power can be present, yet not benefit anybody because of speculation. Are you hearing me? Is everyone hearing me this morning? I know I'm not spitting right now and flying off. (laughs) Uh, But I I just believe we're we're getting what we need. The reason was, verse 22, they weren't, the power was present, but they, those who were present, were not receiving from the present power that was available to heal them. Verse 22, look at this, verse 22. Now Jesus challenges it. He, he, he speaks to these guys because he perceived their thoughts. I don't know how you can perceive your thoughts. <laughs> Watch what you're thinking, right? Uh, he, he can perceive your thoughts. He perceived their thoughts, and he answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? What, what, what quenched the power, what quenched the Spirit of God was their reasoning. They over... Um, tried to overthink the, the things that Jesus was saying. And it hindered. See, where there is no honor um, in, there is no receiving from. Isn't that so true? Uh, he who receives a prophet in the name of of a prophet receives the prophet's reward. You hear me? You, if you don't receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you can't receive what that prophet's got. You can't even tap in or receive the anointing that's on that, that prophet. There is something about naming. I'm telling you, there's something about saying, there's something about naming the gift and recognizing the gift in somebody else. Where's the, where is the anointing? Unity, right? Where is the commanded blessing? Unity. There is something about naming. Who do you say that I am? Simon Barjona. Well, he, he wrote up and he said, well, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. That's who you are. And, uh, and Jesus said, man, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but, but my father from heaven, there was something from heaven that came to you. And now you could receive it because I'm from heaven, you see. And I got a supply of heaven in me. And when you na- named me who I am, then you could receive from me who you are. And you could receive... Uh, from me further light but Jesus is not defined by who you say he is but sure what but 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 he is defined uh, by what you say he is concerning what he can do in your life if you don't call him Lord he cannot be your Lord but until you confess him and declare him from your spirit from your heart having believed in your heart that he is Lord then now he is your Lord, but not until you name him. He can't be your healer unless you name him. You hear me? He can't be your provider unless you name him that. 
So there may be a ministry gift that perhaps comes into town, say, or comes to a church, sent by Jesus, the head of the church, to benefit and equip you. But, uh, but, but it's interesting that, that uh, it is the case a lot of times where, where 50% uh, take what was heard because they received that ministry gift based on, on who that individual was. A teacher anointed by God. Woo! A name is, this person is a teacher. I receive their name. I name them. They're a teacher anointed by God. So I can receive what they've got. But if it's like, well, let's see what this guy's got. Man, I don't want to be in that room. <laughs> uh, we need to out-volume them, don't we? You know, we've got to get louder just so that they know that we're having fun as well. Woo! <laughs> Way! <laughs> We're having fun too. It's not just children's ministry. We ought to, have, we ought to be allowed sometimes to church. But. but notice, until you name a, a, an individual, you can't receive. Often that's the case. There's blockages until you name them or receive them. Not in the name that they gave themselves. You understand what I mean? But the name they have in the spirit have been given by the father the amount of times that uh lynn hammond's real hot on this her prayer journal she talks a lot about this her devotional uh, but many times the people come in a in an atmosphere even like this i'm not talking about the preacher i'm talking, uh, sometimes the preacher uh but times like this where we don't we don't receive one another um as they've got something to give do you know what it chokes what they've got it, but it, it, until you name them, what well, God has named them, come on somebody, until then can that anointing be unlocked and be realized and experienced. And I really believe that, that in order for the corporate, the unity, where God said, blessed, come on somebody, healing blessing, you know, the anointing flows, power rule. Power experience, prosperity, experienced. Not just taught, come on now. Not just demonstrated before you, but you experiencing for yourself. The corporate is going to be on the back of, on the back of honor. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is where, why, this is why you can't, because, because some of you know, we were one spirit. But here's the thing. There is different expressions. There's different administrations. So someone may be a teacher, but say, sound, sound a little bit different to your favorite teacher. And so because they don't sound like your favorite preacher or teacher, thank God for proclamation, preaching, which is proclamation of the good news, preaching. But thank God for teaching too. Teaching will tell you what to do. Preaching will inspire you and stir you up to, to do what you've been taught. We need both. Uh, I said we need both. Hallelujah. In fact, we don't just need both. We don't just need teaching and preaching. In fact, the church in Antioch in Acts chapter 15, uh, they, had, they had, I believe it's around verse 32, around that time, uh, around, around, around there. Uh, it tells us they, there was teaching going on. How many know you need good teaching in the church? Every church needs good teaching. Uh, we need to know what to do. But there was preaching. Thank God for preaching. That's going to inspire us to do what we've been taught. What to do. But they didn't just have preaching and teaching. They also had the prophetic. Come on, somebody. They had somebody called Judas. And they also had somebody called Silas, and they were interpreters of the divine will of God. I believe it's around, someone help me, verse 32, Acts 15, verse 32, someone find it. And is it, okay, verse 32, they, they, they uh, let's put it up on the screen. There was prophetic, they weren't just preaching, there wasn't just teaching, but there was the prophetic voice too. It says, now Judas and Silas among being prophets also exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. Let's put this up in the Amplified. Look at this. In the Amplified, it says this. Look at this. Amplified. They were inspired interpreters of the will and purposes of God. They urged through prophecy. There was an urging. 
there was a, they were warned, hey, you need to make a course correction. Through prophecy, this is what happens through prophecy. You are urged to do. There, when prophecy is given, there is mobilization. There is mobilizing. Hallelujah. Through prophecy. We've got to believe this. Because when the prophetic word goes forth, um, you've got to, okay, be, be intelligent, be aware, acknowledge what's actually going forth. There is some urgent, so there's got to be some action going on. There is some warning, maybe, maybe uh, not for everybody, but, but he who has ears, let him hear. Hey, I need to make a course correction. They were consoled, some who needed to be consoled through prophecy, through that prophetic word. People were restored back from where they were on the ground to, to being back on their feet. Amen. Thank God for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. They were encouraged. There was a, an instilling infusion of courage. How many know you can't do what God's called you to do without a boldness, a Holy Ghost spirit, spirit given boldness and courage? Hallelujah. Well, this happened through, through these prophets. The brethren with many words and strengthened them. Through it, strengthening comes. But if Silas sounded a little bit different to one of my other favorite prophets, and Silas is speaking, and I'm like, well, let's really see what you've got. Come on. Let's see what you've got. You're not naming them. You're not honoring them. So do you know what's happening? You, you lock down, shut down the urgent, needed warning, consoling, encouragement, and strengthening. That, that God knew you needed, and he, he selected a chosen vessel to act as a conduit through which the Spirit of the living God wanted to flow all these things through, but because you didn't name him, Name them as a prophet. You couldn't receive from that prophet. Are you hearing me? So what we have to do, no matter who it is. When little Karis came up, uh, she's big, mighty Karis. Come on now. Preacher Karis, who came and spoke under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And she gave words. Amen. She gave words about get out the boat. Didn't she? And uh, how many know that was just spot on? That's what the Spirit of the Lord uh, want, wanted. Amen. And so, but if you don't, if you are, well, that's just a child. What does she know? Then you lock down from receiving through that chosen vessel for the moment. I am telling you, don't, Paul said it this way, count no man after the flesh. Discern the Spirit of, of it. I know this is a little bit deeper than what I intended it. Whew. Let me just read that one scripture. Yeah, let me just read this one scripture. Look at this. Um, thank you, Holy Ghost. Does anyone believe that God is helping us? First yes. Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. It says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without two things. Without wrath and without doubting. He said, I will. Therefore, the men pray everywhere. Paul was saying, if you're going to draw near to God, how many know when we're praying, we're drawing near to God in his presence? And these four points were four points of how to actually, um, how to, to go up to those new levels that we need to access. And uh, I think my second point, no, my first point was, my first point was humility. This is points how to go up to new, new levels. Now, he who will exalt or, or promote himself will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be humility. I have a bunch of scriptures on that. But humility surrenders. Come on now. Surrenders to God. Surrenders to what he's doing. Amen. Doesn't, doesn't, oh, glory to God. Uh, doesn't stand afar off while, while, while they watch other people cross over. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Even on that point, come on now. Oh, I just, I wish I had four more hours, Evie. Um, you do, just <laughs> The moment Elisha chased down, chased down, followed the anointing 
tell me what happened. Um, and he, he said, well, what, he turned around and said, what do you want? Didn't he? He said, the prophet Elijah said to Elisha, what do you want? He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. He said, oh, you've asked a, you've asked a, a hard thing, didn't he? And he goes on, uh, nevertheless, man, his hunger pursued it. Yeah. And there was times where the prophet even said, go away. Stop. Man, he was persistent. No, I'm not stop. I'm following this. I know I need the anointing. Now notice, quit seeking what you think you want. Right? And start seeking and following the anointing because everything that you want is in the anointing. And the moment you follow the anointing, come on now, Elijah represented the anointing. The moment you follow the anointing, the leading of the Spirit of God. Come on, where the power of God is. Amen. Amen. Follow the unction, the anointing that you have in the Holy One that you've got on the inside of you. Came from the Holy One. Come on, you got an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You, all, you need you, all the things that you need to know. Follow, 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 follow that. Instead of following what you want, when you follow the anointing, like Elisha followed the anointing on Elijah, he, the, the anointing will turn around and go, what is it that you want? Instead of you chasing what you want, you follow the anointing, and the, the anointing will deal with what you want. Woo, come on, somebody. It's all in the anointing. It's all in the power. The power of God equips us, anoints us, energizes us. And there is the corporate anointing. There's the believer's anointing. There's the corporate anointing. And I want to follow it. But in order for me to receive it from other people who God has placed in my life, I must honor them. I must be united. Come on now. Be united, people. This is why I support a certain team in the city. You got to unite together. We got to discern the anointings on you. The anointings on you. Now, now you speak. You hear me? Um, and we, but, but, but here's the thing. I believe so, so, this is not taught enough in the church. Yeah. So if I just pull on random people, people think, well, oh no, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted someone else to speak. I don't want that person to speak. But the anointing to speak is on that person. And so God knows who's going to be received or not. Is it possible that, that even um, those who should speak up don't speak up because of fear? Is it possible that, that they're not even plucked up to speak because there'll be more dishonor than honor? So there's a hindrance to what God wants to get done. Now, I didn't mean to go this way. But here, here Paul said, humility will take you up. So humility looks like this. Paul said, if you're going to draw near to God, there's two things you've got to be aware of. God's going to confront, number one, your wrath, and number two, he's going to confront your, um, that second one. <laughs> What's the scripture? <laughs> that second one. Doubting. <laughs> your wrath and your doubting. He said this, when you come in prayer, in the presence of God, surrender, lift up holy hands. Say, this is a universal sign of surrender, isn't it? He said, okay, when you do this, you're not just praying, you're not just worshiping. Uh, I want to see whether or not you're going to allow me to take, to, to deal with and confront your wrath and your doubt. He's going to say, okay, are you willing for me to get wrath out of you? Are you willing, to, uh, willing for me to confront your doubting and get doubting out of you and pour faith into you? Are you willing for these two things? That's what takes place. This is major. This is so important. I'd love to get into it. Hallelujah. 